That might be the way. Let's let's let's. Oh, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? We're. <laughs> I feel like we explained pretty well. I don't really know Let's about, about this. Okay. The screw thing's going. Okay. I don't We're know get about. Some about... Game What is up, friends? So first thing on the agenda today was working, obviously, and now, as I said before, impossible to get out of the house to do anything before 10.30. The coolest thing I got going on right now is I'm headed up to Bear Performance Gym, and I'm going to show those guys how to throw some Highland Games implements. I also wanted to address in this video a little bit um, about how to get into the Highland Games. It's a little bit of a weird thing, totally understand that. Um, some of you that follow this channel are obviously very familiar with it. If you follow Matt, my business partner, you're also very familiar with it as well. But some of you may just follow us because of the brand, because of hate brand, so um, it might be worth getting into answering some of those questions about how do I get started in the Highland Games. First Highland Games lesson, be prepared to have a lot of junk as you get more obsessed with this sport. Step one to getting started in the Highland Games, find a competition. I know this seems crazy compared to any other sport you want to get into, where you kind of want to do some research, you want to train, you want to get some experience with it. First thing you do is you need to find a competition. You can either compete or you can go at least watch. I recommend either. I don't tell anybody to wait or there's a certain point you need to be ready to compete. If you're ready and you want to give it a shot, do the same thing I did, find the closest one and sign up. Where these generally take place are at Celtic festivals. Celtic festivals are Scottish festivals. These are heritage festivals that take place all around the country. If you're not into these already, you will be shocked how many of these are actually happening around the United States or around the world that you never even heard of. And they draw out thousands of people. Uh, there's great vendors, there's great food, and there's Highland Games. There's Scottish Highland Games at these. So search first in your city. Especially if you live in a larger metropolitan area, searching your city for Celtic festivals, Scottish festivals. That's where you're going to find where there's a potential for athletics. You look for the athletic director, you find out are there athletics involved. You'll see them called heavy athletics on the website sometimes. You find out, you email that person, you see if you can get on the roster, or you just ask some questions about coming to watch, all that kind of good stuff. Maybe you can even volunteer. Now, if you don't find anything in your city, which is possible, Google your state. Google whatever your state is, Wyoming Celtic Festival. By the way, good luck in Wyoming. The reason I tell everybody to find a competition first, to either compete, volunteer, or at least go watch, is that this is such an unusual sport that doesn't get a ton of coverage outside of some ESPN coverage in the 90s on the Ocho, I think it was, that you're not going to really have an idea of what's going on or what you're supposed to do or what the events mean or what the particular rules are. Not even the particular rules, the big general rules you're not going to understand unless you get out there and you see it or you try it. So you're probably, if you're going to get out there and compete, you're going to get out, you're going to trip over stuff, you're going to fall, you're going to do stuff wrong, and that's great. Nobody minds, everybody's used to it out there. So I think the Bear Brothers are pulling up right now, so we're going to take a pause from all the talking, get to some throwing and messing around, then we'll come back to this later. Scars are here, baby. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is Con. How's it hey, going, Con, man? Mike. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. You're looking a little chubby there, man. I know. I need to fix that up. All right. So the rundown of Highland Games is this. I'm not going to give you a big history lesson. Best way to look at it is, a thousand years ago at least, a bunch of guys were standing around in a field. They had invented scotch or beer before they had invented television. So they decided, hey, some rocks. I bet I can throw that further than you can. And one of the guys said, no, you can't. So then they picked up everything else in the field and around the house and tried to do that too. That's about it. That's I want a science fiction moon So I can see you clearly So I can discern just what went wrong Woo! It wasn't caught on I camera sure, You know I don't do anything half-ass, Mike. <laughs> Whole ass everything. I stick my head deep in the sand That was my distance. I, I mean, I don't know what the world record is. 
probably right at it. We're gonna pick up the technique a little bit. I've seen Mike and Matt do this on their channels all the time. And I know it's not fair, but I need more time. <laughs> and I know it's not fair, but I need more time. With you. Okay, Nick is worried about hurting somebody or a car with the hammer, but everything's about 65 feet away, so I think he's safe. Last four air. So you gotta get me out of here. Said I don't know about you, but I'm down. I don't wanna stay home. I raise up my glass to those I've known. Oh shit! <laughs> That'll be the end of the light hammer. All right, Nick, step on in. So what we got next? We got the 56 pound wafer distance. I'm gonna warn you right now. This thing makes an asshole out of everybody. There's no way. There's no way around it. Hold games. Hold games. Hold games. <laughs> That's now think about the end of time. No, it's not fair, but. Preston Bear in the building, mid 10,000 calorie challenge. How you feeling? I feel good. Yeah. This is the right day to do it because it's not like the sun's beating down on you. It's there's a nice breeze outside where it's like I still feel good when I go outside. I don't know about y'all. I think Nick Bear killed it. I think Preston. Yeah, he showed up late. He showed up late to practice. Never gonna be good, right? Practice so, is everything. Nick runs Bear Performance Nutrition, which is a supplement company that operates right here in Round Rock, Texas. Right behind us right here. It's a warehouse and gym. Puts out awesome stuff, man. Just launched protein. Best tasting protein I've ever had in my life. I can only imagine what this protein will taste like wearing a kilt from now on. <laughs> Packed up and leaving Bear Performance. That was a blast. That was really, really fun. And it's also really fun to have people just completely in a different world doing different stuff come try out your thing. Now, it's easy to watch the difference between an okay thrower like me and watch those guys and it's it's easy to want to laugh haha that you know they don't know what they're doing it's the first time trying this stuff and honestly i've seen a lot of brand new people i've seen a lot of people try for the first time and they didn't do half bad i'm gonna grab some lunch now i gotta get a couple things from the grocery store that i missed last time super dad here and then we'll talk a little bit more about getting into the highland game hey look what we got we got a hannah what'd you make at school today can I see it? Ooh, nice. Can you make it flap its wings? Nice. All right, you ready to go home? Mm-hmm. Let's go. The next phase of getting into the Highland Games is start training for it. Start practicing. After you've got an idea of what you're going to be doing, start training for it. The implements themselves, all this junk, it's going to cost a little bit of money. It, it does cost. And if you're just kind of thinking about trying it out, giving it a shot, my advice to people is always start throwing stones. Uh, start with the stones, start with the standing throw, start with the open stone because you can find a rock for cheap. You can find them in a riverbed, you can go to a landscaping store and find 16 pound stone, 22 pound stone. You can find that stuff. Just find something with a decent shape that's not too ugly and impossible to get into your neck. Don't go for anything super heavy like a 30 pound stone. It's not going to make you any better. Just stick with the lighter stuff on the lower end of the acceptable weight ranges. But start throwing stones because it's going to teach you some of those very fundamental things about throwing if you don't come from a throwing background. 
It's going to teach you things about um, initiating with your lower body. It's going to teach you to turn your right foot. It's going to teach you how it feels to have an implement that you have to move along with your body when you have the additional weight with you. All those sort of things. It's going to teach you the very fundamental principles. Now, in terms of what you do in the weight room, if you're already lifting, if you're already doing the barbell movements, the slow lifts, the squat bench, deadlift, overhead press, add to that some sort of Olympic movement, like a snatch pull, clean pull, clean jerk, full snatch, and some bounding, jumping. Move your body through space. So things are going to make you a little more athletic, a little more ready to throw. Start adding that stuff in. This is a spot where I'm going to do a plug for our company, teamtraininglab.com, where we have a very large and active group of Highland Games athletes. Uh, some are extremely new, they come to us before they've ever thrown in a games, and some are very experienced up towards the uh, upper amateurs and uh, the pro level. So come join us, I'll make sure you have all the information below as well. But that's a great way for a pretty good price to get Highland Games programming for your weight room and your throws. That'll just spell it out for you, so all you got to think about is getting out there and doing the work. Alright, next step, let's say you've gotten a little bit more interested in doing this, you've done a games or two, you've really got the bug now. And you're wondering, well, I've looked around, I've asked around about what it takes to buy implements like the weight for distance and the hammers, and it's really pricey, and I'm kind of worried about whether I need to do that. You can go the homemade route, which I did for a while too, but having done that, I will tell you that if you're interested and you want to do this as a sport, go ahead and invest the money. Spend the money to buy the right implements. You don't have to get them all at once. Get them piecemeal. Start working on them. Uh, get those things. But if you can only afford one, go with the lighter implement because you're going to be able to practice more without tearing yourself up. I get my implements from MDS Highland Games Implements. Look them up on Facebook. They make fantastic quality stuff. The stuff I throw is from them. And they're reasonably priced. Stuff lasts. It's good. And it flies. Okay, final note about the Highland Games. It is the most fun sport that I've ever been a part of. I played other sports when I was younger, and while there was a lot of enjoyment in those, it was also very serious, and there was a lot of drama that goes along with any organized sport you have that kind of stuff. That stuff does not exist in the Highland Games for the most part. And I say that because a lot of people when they're new to the sport, especially when they come from other strength sports like powerlifting, strongman, they tend to take themselves a little bit seriously. They tend to think that they want to perform at a certain level and they get really disappointed and angry when they can't. So I would say leave that attitude at home. Realize that Highland Games is much more about a celebration. Uh, it's much more a place where athletes that have been through the ringer a little bit tend to land. Uh, if, you, if you did track and field, uh, this is probably a great outlet for you once you're done with collegiate track and field to throw for the joy of throwing and just have a good time doing it instead of worrying about everything associated with uh, meets, coaching, programs, all that kind of stuff. But no matter what sport you come from, please have a good time out there. If you get disappointed or upset on a throw or a performance for a day, you just got to let it roll off. You can be upset for a second. You're a human being. I totally understand it. But, man, we're wearing kilts and throwing rocks and sticks in a field. So don't take yourself too seriously, especially in training. You have to understand that, especially if you don't come from a throwing background, this is going to take much longer than you think it's going to to get good at it. Even if you're initially okay, it takes a long time to get good at it. So be patient. Enjoy the process. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy the fact that you have something to work towards, a goal, a sport that you're into that you want to work towards, and you have some direction in your training. Because that's really cool to improve your life, improve your health, and do it with a goal in mind because it kind of makes that whole intrinsic motivation thing a lot easier. Thank you guys for watching. I hope if any of you are interested in getting into the Highland Games, this helped you out. This got you into that mode. This gave you the information you needed. If you have any more questions, drop those in the comments section below. I'll answer every single one of them. Thanks again, guys.